Hey everyone, welcome to my class. Today we're going to be studying how to start seeds. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, I'm sure most of you know how to start seeds, but if you don't, this will be a great video for you. I am a little bit behind the times and I wanted to read what I should be doing in February, go over that, and then we're going to talk about some different ways to start seeds. And I'll show you the way that I most prefer. Uh, but first, here's a message from our sponsor. <laughs> I don't really have a sponsor. I, I want a sponsor, but I don't have one yet. <gasps> I was just kidding. <clears throat> anyway, I got this wonderful calendar and I'm just gonna kind of run back and see. There wasn't much that I needed to do in January and I kind of totally skipped over looking at January. It's talking about adjusting soil pH, preparing your, your seed order, test germination of leftover seeds, all these sorts of things you're supposed to do in January. And I was busy getting my fireplace done. So now I'm a little bit behind, but February, it says prepare your seed order for warm season, direct seeded crops. And then on the seventh, it tells you that it's six weeks until early date to plant kale and cabbage. And it says to seed kale and cabbage, the, the brassicas, now. Okay, that was, nine days ago and so I'm going to look and see what brassicas I have and we're going to get those seeded and it says use dormant oil sprays on your fruit trees well I've got four trees the former owners uh, had recently planted two peach and two apple and I have not really been paying attention to them at all I'm going to have to investigate what these sprays are because I've never sprayed a fruit tree on the 15th, monitor transplants closely to ensure they are not over or under water. This is very important when you seed your plants. You don't want to water them too much. And I found a really great system. It was through Gardener Supply. I wish I had another one. I don't. I literally gave it all away. I had the big trays, the smaller trays, the individual, the this, the that, the this, the lights, the heating mats, all of it I gave away <laughs> when I left my house. I gave it to Luis, my friend Luis in Long Beach. It says on the 16th, today, dormant sprays like lime sulfur can reduce disease on many fruit crops before bud break. And then they're talking about storing bare root plants carefully, pruning fruit trees, and making sure that young transplants, they're referring to transplants as anything that you are seeding in a tray that you plan to transplant later. If they have low light, they are stretching up for the light and then they're gonna get leggy and sometimes they don't do well. Especially peppers, it's really great to get peppers down and compact so they get those stronger stems and then they really put out a lot of branches. It's just boom, boom, boom uh, from the 22nd on. I can direct seed English peas. So literally I've got a week to get some peas and I haven't ordered seeds online in a long time because I had so many, but I can't go without peas. That's not conceivable. And here we go. The first mention of Middle Tennessee is prepare garden soil on the 23rd. And on the 24th, it's eight weeks from the frost-free date here. I've got nine weeks in a day until the frost-free date in Middle Tennessee. Oh, it says seed warm season transplants now. Okay, so all I, according to this, all I have to do is seed my, you know, my cold season stuff. So let's just look, because I have them divided. All of my warm season is in here, and you'll get a much better view of that later. But <laughs> it is interesting because I have, I have. This is, 
these two sections are my pepper seeds. I mean, <laughs> oh goodness. I don't have that many tomato seeds, but I have plenty. I have plenty, unless you want to send me something I don't have. Here we go, these are the cool season plants. I also have herbs in here. And I actually have beans because that was full. Uh, I don't have as much cool season stuff. But what I do have, yes. Outside of herbs, I have, oh dear, something spilled. Now this is the first time I'm trying these seed organizers. They're also considered craft organizers. You could put all sorts of little various crafts in there. But what I have, now I don't know of anyone who really, really loves kale. <laughs> The kale is so good for you. It's great to put in smoothies. It's great to put in your green juice. You get the absolute most amount of nutrition if you just drink it raw. But the best kale to put in the juicer is the Nero Toscano Lacinato. It's got the long skinny leaves and they go down into the juicer much easier than some of the others. This is an heirloom from Botanical Interests. And I've got Brunswick cabbage. Uh, Brunswick cabbage is a large drumhead cabbage, very cold hardy. This is from Baker Creek. This is one of his uh, free giveaways. They do a lot of seed giveaways. I have red express cabbage. Now I think this was just sent to me and so I'll be trying that. I love cabbage and I do want to make my own kraut this year. I've never done that and I want to try that. I've got Brussels sprouts from Seeds of Change. Uh, that was sent to me. That was um, sell by 2018. Also snow, snowball cauliflower. I love cauliflower. Uh, that's 2018. And then Ford Hook Chard. That's just like the white chard, the white stemmed chard, also 2018. And then Collards, which I have never grown. I have eaten some fantastic cooked collards, but I have never grown them or cooked them. I have a Rainbow Swiss Chard. This is from M.I. Gardner. This was given to me. And this is uh, more of the heirloom kale and snowball cauliflower and more lacinato. I'm gonna have kale coming out my ears. What I should really do is try a little bit of each one of these and go from there. Here I have, this is something that I grew. <laughs> it's unmarked, great. And here we have Daikon radish. These are amazing. They li literally get like, well, it depends on the depth of your pot. If you, I had to grow in pots when I grew them, um, but I'd like to try that again. Those are sort of my vegetables. These are sort of my leafy greens. So all of these are cool season vegetables. So I've got quite a bit of lettuce and arugula. Let's just sort this real quick. I got, I've got, i got red giant mustard. Uh, these are these thank you. They give you a lot of thank you seeds when you order from Botanical Interests. And I do happen to be an affiliate for Botanical Interests, though I've never collected any money for it. I did sign up for that a long time ago. So if you wanna get my link for that and, and see if it works, that would be awesome. Somebody sent me Bloomsdale Longstanding Spinach. I've got baby greens, baby arugula. I love arugula. I could eat that every day. Cherry bell radish. These are just some of the favorites that I grew every year. Rocket, which is more arugula. Uh, somebody sent me the burpee radish. This is my own celery seed. I think I had this from 2016. <laughs> but I have celery that I grew from last year 
which is 2019. And celery seed is so fine, it's just like dust almost. Uh, and here are my shallot seeds. I don't know why I put them in with this. I'll separate that. Here's the daikon radish that I collected from the daikon radish that I grew. And I only had a couple of pots of it, you know, maybe, maybe eight plants or something, but there was so much seed. So I'll be definitely doing that. And lettuce, lettuce. It's so funny, this, this mustard red giant looks very similar to the Butterhead Marvel of Four Seasons lettuce. These are my colors. I gotta grow this stuff. So, I mean, mustard is kind of a lettuce. Grows like lettuce. Now, somebody gave me peppercress. This is Baker Creek. I've never grown peppercress. This was packed for 2019. This is Paris Island Koss, and I've never grown that one, that variety particularly. These are wonderful little sixers, individual sixers, and I have a large tray to put them in, but I don't have a lid to cover them, and seeds need to be covered until they germinate. So I'll have to figure that out. All of these are kale collards, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower, Swiss chard. We've got all of the basics of the brassicas right here. And more here and more there. Okay, and these are our radishes. We have arugula, lettuce, other greens, and spinach. We have um, mustard and carrots. What I'm gonna do today is I'm going to use this seed tray. I'm gonna start with this and see how far I get. You know what, I would really like to plant my carrots differently. I want to plant my carrots in five gallon pots. So I'm not planting carrots today, That's, that reminds me. I've gotta go see what kind of five gallon pots I have because I'm gonna start in pots, and carrots are great to just, you know, start a pot, the next week start a pot, the next week start a pot, so that you have carrots, fresh carrots, all season. And also I have celery, forgot that. And what's, whoops, this is, le oh, this one is the one that's leaking. There's a hole in this. This is Asian mustard. Oh, I see the hole. So that's what's spilling everywhere, but I still have plenty left, so I've got two kinds of mustard. And mustard is actually really good to grow. Uh, I think it's great for your soil, and I need to research that, but don't forget to grow your mustard. Okay, so I have all my seed starting mix, and that particular mix I like a lot. I haven't used that one before. I've used a lot of different ones, and I really like it because it's pre-moistened, it's finer, it's uh, easy to crumble and easy to get in the uh, cells. It's always a good idea to go outside <laughs> so you don't make a mess filling up your cells because no matter what you do, it, you're gonna have soil all over the place. So I didn't wanna be sweeping that up. The, I put it in a big bin out in the garage. I filled it all up, made sure all the lumps were out, and now we're gonna start. So what I like to do, I use a tweezer and I put, because the brassica seeds, I mean, they all look so much alike. I'm not kidding. The kale and the, they all are the same. And radish seeds are just like them, but larger. And radish seeds are usually brown instead of blackish. I'm gonna start with kale since I have so much. Those are my kales, collards, chard, chard, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage. Those are your basics. Uh, cabbage and kale. You know, it's funny, I only have one kind of kale. I didn't realize that. Oh, how'd you get over there? Okay. 
Rebecca at Food Forest Next Door. Uh, she's got a new channel if you want to check that out. She's up in Kentucky, Louisville area, backyard gardener, and she teaches science. So she knows a lot from the scientific uh, point of view as well as permaculture. So check out her channel. But she just started her seeds, which reminded me I had to get onto it. And she had these gorgeous little um, seed tags that she had picked up at a craft store or something. And I really want those. But in the meantime, I'm going to use these six. Six came with all of that. I don't know why. but uh, And then I have pop these tiny little popsicle sticks. I had a dozen of these, no, I had 10 of these, and I cut them in half with just a tough pair of scissors. I decided to put each species, each different variety of vegetable in a different sixer, okay? I have a whole video on this Agrilon plug plant trainer. This thing is fantastic. It is the most compact planting tray I've ever seen. It's literally a little plug. And the things I grew in it last year did very well. So these botanical interest seeds have so much great information. And in fact, they say on here, if you open up the package inside, they have their favorite recipe for cooking this lacinato kale which is also called Nero Toscana. Brassica oleracea. Okay. I'm gonna put two indentations in each cell. I'm gonna drop in one seed. These are so small, I use a tweezer. And this is gonna be very time consuming. So I'm gonna work on this. finished the first big tray of my brassicas and spinach. So I am going to spray this, even though this is very moist because I just sprayed it, I'm going to spray it once again. The thing about chard is they're big, it's sort of like a cluster. The seeds are like a cluster. And they say there's more than one plant in there. So obviously I'm only going to put one in each cell. Oh, I'd give anything for some beet seeds, but I don't have any. Okay, we're going to do three rows of rainbow. And two rows of Ford hook. And two rows of Swiss. Now all of these chard and beet seeds and everything can be direct sown. I always did it that way in California. But I'm trying to get a head start with doing transplants. Okay. This is another plant that you can harvest early Oh, oh, I forgot one unique time-saving feature of this tray is 
the top has points here and you literally make your <laughs> indentation for your seed. Although the charred seed, I don't know. I don't think that would be deep enough to get the charred seed down in there. Seeds of Change has these zippered tops that really keep the seeds fresh. I think it needs to be deeper. These are big seeds. I always forget where I am. Golly! Come on, birds! There's a window there! Goodness! Scare me half to death. Okay, that's the second one. So this is going to be my Swiss. And I have a feeling this is probably the same thing as the first one. It's just got a little bit different name, different seed company. I want to go see if that bird is lying prostrate on my front porch. Goodness, I need to put something there that they don't crash into those windows. Okay, that's the third one. All right. Okay, I'm gonna spray that. One more time. The first was Second was Ford Hook. Now I plan to have better tags. This is just to get me through this exercise today. Okay, we put the top on here. And it's ready to go. <laughs> now all I have to do is all of these. <laughs> Okay, we got it done. My first seeding of the year and you were right here with me. Thanks so much for watching and if you are a late bloomer like me, I hope you will subscribe and tell your friends and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you next time.